Okay, boys and girls, we are going to read and discuss our story. Why is the Statue of Liberty green? So the first thing we really want to talk about is what type of story it is. And it is, what type of story is it? Yes, Logan? A narrative nonfiction. A narrative nonfiction. And let's look at what makes a narrative nonfiction. Well, a narrative nonfiction gives factual information. It tells us facts. Facts are true. Is a fact true, boys and girls? Yes, facts are always true pieces of information. A fact is true. So it gives us factual information by telling us a story. So we are hearing, this is in story four, but it's giving us factual information. So we learn real facts. Now we also can have some headings and subheadings in a narrative nonfiction, which this story had. It gives us sections, and we can have visuals and text features, and it gives us words about our topic. So the interesting thing about a narrative nonfiction is it gives us facts, facts that are true, true facts. Information that you could look up in an encyclopedia. You could go to a site about the Statue of Liberty and find out that those facts are true. Oh, as a matter of fact, we watched, we saw a video one day, and it gave us some of the exact same facts, didn't it? So those are true facts. A narrative nonfiction gives us true facts. Okay, so we learned true facts. It gives us words about the topic, it includes visuals and text features, and it includes headings and subheadings that give, that separates our story into sections, and then we get factual information. So now we're going to read, why is the Statue of Liberty green? one page. I'd like to do one page at a time. A visit to the Statue of Liberty. Our class is going on a field trip. Mrs. Bolt makes us guess where. What's green and as tall as a 22-story building? She asks. A dinosaur! Shouts Elijah. A green skyscraper! Guesses Elizabeth. Where are they going on their field trip? Where are they going on their field trip? Clark? The Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty. They're going on the set, going to see the Statue of Liberty. We're going to visit the Statue of Liberty, Mrs. Bolt says. What does Liberty mean? Kiara asks. Mrs. Bolt answers, Liberty means freedom. The Statue of Liberty stands in New York Harbor. Smaller copies of the statue stand in cities around the world, from Paris, France, to Buenos Aires, Argentina, to Fargo, North Dakota. Okay, so somebody tell me, what does liberty mean? What does liberty mean? Ethan? Freedom. Freedom. And somebody else tell me, where... Does, where is the Statue of Liberty located? Where is it located? Teddy. Liberty Island. Liberty Island. It should be kind of a tip off. And well, Liberty Island in New York Harbor. Okay, so it is in Liberty Island, but it's in New York Harbor. It is stands in New York Harbor. So it is on Liberty Island, but it is in New York Harbor. Everybody say New York Harbor. New York Harbor. Right, it's in New York Harbor. New York Harbor, say it again. 
New York Harbor. So where is the Statue of Liberty? Yes. On New, in, New, in New York Harbor on Liberty Island. But it's on New York Harbor. In New York Harbor. We take a ferry to Liberty Island. We meet Ranger Alicia at the flagpole. She teaches visitors about the monument. The Statue of Liberty was a gift from France to the United States. She tells us it was a symbol of friendship. Workers in France spent nine years building it. A gift? asked Sally. How would you wrap a present that big? Ranger Alicia says workers took the statue apart and put it in 214 boxes. A ship carried the boxes to New York in 1885. We walk to the front of the Statue of Liberty. The statue sits on a huge base. Ranger Alicia calls it a pedestal. A symbol is something that stands for something else. The Statue of Liberty stands for freedom. So, sorry. A ferry is a boat that takes people or vehicles across a river or waterway. Monument. A monument is a large statue or building that honors an important person or event in history. So could somebody tell me, what is the base of the Statue of Liberty called? What do they call that base? There's another word for the base. What is the base called? Thomas? The pedestal. The pedestal. Another word for the base is the pedestal. What is the base called, Rocco? I don't know. Thomas, tell him. It's called the pedestal. What is it called? It's called the pedestal. The pedestal, yes. The pedestal, the pedestal. Remember, they go in the pedestal. That's going to happen. Oh, and here's information. The pedestal is 154 feet, 47 meters tall. The statue is 151 feet, 46 meters tall. Together, they are 305 feet, 93 meters tall. That is as long as three football fields. We learned that American workers built the base. A woman named Emma Lazarus wrote a poem about the Statue of Liberty, Ranger Alicia says. Her poem inspired thousands of Americans to donate money to buy the pedestal. Then workers put the statue back together on the base. The Statue of Liberty opened to visitors in 1886. Inspired. If an idea or action inspired you, it made you want to do something. inside the pedestal. Next, we go inside the pedestal. It's like a museum. Oh no, says Ella. Did the torch fall down? Ranger Alicia says this is the old torch. Workers put up a new torch. Torch. A torch is a long stick with a flame at one end that may be used for light or to start a fire. So what do they have in the museum? What is in the museum, Yanni? A torch. And what torch is it? Um, it's an old torch. It's the old torch. It's just not an old torch, it's the old torch. It's the original torch that was on the Statue of Liberty, right? So it's the old torch. At night, the flame can be seen out at sea from as far as 12 miles, 19 kilometers away. The green layer is called a patina. It forms when copper mixes with water and changes into a mineral called malachite. She says the new flame is covered in real gold. Lights reflect off the shiny surface. We look at a copy of the statue's face. The nose is taller than we are. 
The Statue of Liberty is made of copper, like a penny, Ranger Alicia tells us. But pennies are brown, says Maria. The statue looks green. Right, says Ranger Alicia. The statue was coppery brown when it was new. Rain, wind, and the sun slowly changed the color to green. So could somebody tell me what covers the new flame on the torch? What covers the new flame on the torch, Libby? It's covered in real gold. And could somebody tell me what is the Statue of Liberty made from? What is she made from? What is she made from, Ivy? Um, she's made out of copper. She is made of copper. Very good, she's made of copper. The big climb. Time to go up the stairs. We climb up 156 steps to the top of the pedestal. My legs are so tired, says Tony. We look up, way up inside the statue. You can see the steel frame, points out Ranger Alicia. The frame is kind of like Lady Liberty's bones. It holds her up. Let's go outside. Sculptor Frederic Auguste Bartholdi designed the statue. A man named Gustave Eiffel built the frame. He is famous for building the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Sculptor. A sculptor is an artist who uses stone, wood, or metal to make a work of art. I can see New York City, Michael shouts. Ranger Alicia points out Ellis Island. People who sailed to the United States used to stop there first when they arrived. These new Americans sailed past the statue on their way. It was one of the first things they saw, she says. She seemed to be welcoming them to their new home. The statue's full name is Liberty Enlightening the World. People also call it Lady Liberty. Well, let's all say the real name of the Statue of Liberty. Liberty enlightening the world. Can we go up to the crown? Marcus asks. Not this time, says Mrs. Bold. Visitors to the crown need special tickets. No. Andrea says, my cousin went up to the crown. She said she was as high as the clouds. Ranger Alicia says there are 377 spiral steps up, and down again. We climb back down the steps. Our field trip is almost done. About 3.5 million people visit the Statue of Liberty every year. So why couldn't the students visit the crown? Alisa, why couldn't they visit the crown? Because they needed a special gold ticket. Yeah, they needed a special ticket. Now, why is the Statue of Liberty green? Why is she green? Logan, why is she green? Because of all the sun, wind, and rain. The sun, wind, and rain. That's right. The sun, wind, and rain. It tells us here. Rain, wind, and the sun slowly changed the color to green because she was a coppery brown when she was built. How amazing is that? Now, boys and girls, this is a question, and as a matter of fact, it was kind of in your journal as well, uh, asking about this if you got to that question. It says, how do you think that immigrants first arriving in the country felt when they saw the Statue of Liberty? So an immigrant is a person who leaves their country to go live in another country. And when immigrants were coming in the 1800s, they would go past the Statue of Liberty. How do you think they felt when they saw the Statue of Liberty? Clark? Joyful. They felt joyful because, why do you think they felt joyful? Because it's like she welcomed them to their new home. Because she's welcoming them to their new home. 
So there would be an excellent way to answer a question if, it, if the test asks you that, right? You have to say why they felt that way. Jensen? Um, Lady Liberty welcomed them to their new home, so they felt welcomed. Very nice. Okay, boys and girls, those, those are good things. They felt joyful upon seeing her because she's welcoming them to their new home. Good job.